The Signs Language of Adam, Volume 1, Book 1, The Ancient Language Master Key, Untold Story of Language. And today we're going to discuss briefly the letter Resh, which is the equivalent of the English letter R. So the letter Resh corresponds to the sound of the German and English R. Uh, geometrically, its value is 200, and the meaning of the letter is actually a head. It came from a depiction of a head, and with time changed. I'm explaining that further in details in, in my book. It is sometimes in Asian languages uh, pronounced as an L. There are a group of letters called the Lamnar, L-M-N-R, or Lamed Mem Nun Resh in Hebrew, which are interchangeable. These letters interchange in roots, and sometimes the letter Resh and L and Lamed, R and L, are interchanged. So, for example, in Asia, instead of foreign, you will have the word phalang. Or for people who can't pronounce the air, so they would say Fleddy instead of Freddy, or Lucia instead of Russia. And this happens quite often. Freddy Mercury, for example, would be pronounced as Fleddy Melkuli in some Asian languages. But this also happens within. Germanic languages, English languages, and within Hebrew itself. For example, the word garin turns into galin, margalit, or marganit. It does happen also in words in other languages. It happens also, for example, within um, roots that turn from Hebrew to German. For example, the word aber in German means aval in Hebrew, meaning but. So, aval, aber. It's the same root, it's just that the R and L interchanged. The meaning of the letter actually head, but it refers to anything that has a head. And that could be the head of a grain, the head of a plant, the head of a mountain, a high head, which is Har. It's actually the He is in English high, and Resh, it's a head, so it's a high head, it's a mountain top. It could be the head of a cattle. It appears in roots as grain for example, which is the head of the plant, which flies away, and it's actually the seed, which you can plant, but you can also grind it and eat it. So it appears in roots with everything that to do with heads, and with the house of heads. So for example, in Hebrew, bar, is the, meaning the house of heads, is the nature, and everything that grows outside, the, the derivatives of people who travel on the bar, on the fields, in the nature, are the Hebrews from this bar root and many, many other roots which turned in German to ver, fair, far, faren, far, far away. Traveling has to do with traveling over the fields because they used to travel with the cattle heads and the sheep and the goats, which were also heads. So anything you can eat. Rocks also considered as heads and separable things. So heads could mean uh, many things, but mostly things which are alive, nature, or could be detached like rocks, which are detached from a mountain or high. And first as well. So in the head of things, it's in the beginning. Bereshit, for example. It's in the beginning of the Bible. It means in the head of all things. So head means also that. Okay, that was only a very, very brief description of the meaning of the letter. And if you want to read more about how bar is used in roots of places where people travel to, like uh, in Germany, Bramfeld, Bahnfeld, Berlin, Bergedorf, Birmingham, Glastonbury, or in places in Asia, Kachanburi, Rachenburi, Lopaburi, Buriram, or even Burma, and other places with bar, meaning field, you can actually read my book and understand how it got its meaning and where it derives from, how these words turned into other things. In Hebrew, we have other words with bar, for example, like the bear, the dove, but we have the bear likes honey, and the dvora is also with bar, so it's a bee which goes around the bar collecting the flowers. Right, so it's actually many things, also dvarim in Hebrew, things that rotate around the field, everything that is can be collected and carried because you can imagine in the in the past before many years people didn't have wheels the, the, this invention was only about 5,000 years old a little bit more maybe 8,000 years old but before that people still spoke language similar to Hebrew they still carried things around and you only carry the stuff you need which you find and you find it necessary because it's heavy and you can't carry many many things with you right so this and much more you can read in the book signs language of Adam 
which speaks about the development of cave science and other science from the agricultural revolution and before, which developed into the language we speak in today and how it appears in roots, because the language that we are speaking today is actually synchronized with symbols. So every word we say is composed of roots, which are symbols uh, comprised of all kinds of depictions and concepts that we had, which turned into roots and words. So it's actually the alphabet is not what you think. It's not where painting a picture to resemble a thing which sounds similar we are speaking in a sound that corresponds to the picture so it's actually the other way around if you want to learn more more about this you can read it all in my book and uh, the book is not out yet unfortunately so you can either wait for the book to be out and if you want to know more about it you can visit my crowdfunding page i will be happy if you have a look if you can contribute anything that would be great uh, i give some uh, rewards for people who contribute and uh, why is it important to contribute I believe this will bring the world a step forward in the research of languages and where we all came from and not just languages of religions because my book has to do a lot of with how the religions developed, how these concepts were developed, how um, and why are we saying things the way we say them. I believe it would be interesting for everyone and will contribute to peace in the world because there's really no reason to fight religious war when you understand what stands in the background and because we are in many ways developments of very primitive beliefs and if you understand that you can understand more also about human migration because in fact we are all connected in more ways than one we are all very very intermixed and i don't believe there is something like uh, races because we are so mixed and you can understand more when you read my book because it has to do also with human migrations and our languages migrated with the people from one place to another so i will be happy if you can contribute and help this book see the light of day this costs a lot of money i'm only one person i've been doing this research for about seven years alone and i gave it all i can to bring it to light it's going to take some more money more than the funds that i can afford so if you can help and contribute something that would be great if not you can wait for the book to come out i will try to do it as um, affordable as possible i thank you for giving me the time tell you about this new and I believe exciting information about not just the Hebrew language, it has to do with every language and it is revolutionary. Thank you very much and have a nice day everyone. Please visit my page, I will leave a link below if you want to hear some more information. Thank you very much, bye bye.